Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this one, I we would like to teach you how to, how to explore it, the eternal blue vulnerability if you have any, uh, and how to find if you have that vulnerability in your network, and how to exploit that one using Metasploit today. Okay, so in my lab setup, what I have, I just need two different machines, and if I look at my lab setup over here, I'm running a Kali box, and we're going to target this Metasploitable 3, which is a Windows Server 2008, which is running uh, with this IP address that I have given you here in my environment 172.16.0 and 121. The first thing that I'm going to, I'm going to learn, I'm just going to run a quick command with nmap. nmap is unbelievably powerful, right? And we're going to check for SMB vulnerabilities and going after the script engines and see if this particular server which is 2008 if we have any smb vulnerabilities out there so if you run this command okay it has started the scan and it takes just a minute to uh, get done with the scan and this is the ip address report uh, report for the ip address 172.16.021 here are the two different ports which are open and here is the host script result SMB vulnerability MS17010. It says vulnerable. That's a problem. And it's a critical remote code execution vulnerability. Okay, and that is around Microsoft SMB version one. It is going to lead to, to the eternal blue exploit. Okay. Now there are other ways to figure out if the Windows server or the host that you're looking at if it's vulnerable or not. You can directly ask Metasploit that question. So let's just see if we can find Metasploit or Metasploit framework. So let's just open that one. And what we're going to do, we're going to open the Metasploit framework here and we're going to search for the SMB vulnerability and see what we find. Some of the new Kali have the MSF uh, 6. Clear the screen. And let's search for SMB. And if you just search for SMB, there are probably hundreds of different results. And there we go, 126. That's just too many. Uh, let me just clear the screen and let's look for SMB and type auxiliary. Okay, this is the auxiliary, the you know very initial stages when you are trying to figure out your your you're trying to understand the network all the scanning engines they're all going to be part of the auxiliary module hopefully my results is going to be less than that okay i'm drop drop down to 64 right now so let's see if there is something that i'm interested in that catches my eye okay smb i have uh, oh, this is interesting smb 17 there looks like there's lots of smbs and looks like there are a lot of different ones that are going after different type of ms vulnerability ms09 ms06 i70 0547 so let's do let's do uh, another search and this time i'm going to search for uh, search smb Not SMB seventeen. MS seventeen is what I want to search. And it did not find uh, today. I did not type the search properly. So search MS seventeen. Let's see what I get. Okay, so that's much better. So the SMB seventeen. This is the eternal blue one. Okay, and if you look at this, at the eternal romance, eternal romance, eternal blue. So what I want to start, I want to use this one. Okay, let's do this one. This one says, hey, uh, this one you can use to check whether the remote code execution vulnerability is present or not. So it's going to give us hopefully the same result as the end map that we have already done. But if I wanted to use this particular uh, uh, exploit, what I need to do, I'm going to say use three. And if you see I'm here inside that uh, 10 ms10 ms17010 here i always type show options uh, let's just clear the screen first clear and then show options 
and it's saying hey these are all the different type of options that you must set okay but not all of them are required okay but where you have the yes you have to set it so to to quickly figure out which one are really missing i do so missing and it looks like only our host is the only one that i need to set so let's just set our hosts and let's do that one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot one twenty one that's the ip address of my windows server 2008 hit enter if i do show missing again nothing is showing up so that is telling me that everything is good at this time i'm ready to run the scan so if i say run it should tell me whether that server is vulnerable or not and look at that immediately it's telling me the host is likely vulnerable to ms17010 okay so we already know that it is vulnerable so let's go back to the search ms17 and see which other exploit can i use so notice that we have used this one this one or no we have used this one this is under the auxiliary module so now since we have confirmed that we have the vulnerability we're going to go and use something from the exploit module and let's use this one okay which is ms17010 eternal blue so do that i again have to say use zero or i can paste the full path here so if i can copy and paste it here that should also work and yeah so if you see where i am windows is in the ms 17010 eternal blue so i'm inside this particular module so here again i want to clear a screen uh, and again i'm going to do show options and again these are all options i need to set uh, let's see show missing and this one is telling me that i need again my my r host so i'm going to start with r host and see what happens so set r host 172.1616.0. What 121 and do the show missing again? Looks like everything is set. And at this time, let's try to just run and see what happens. Okay, so it's trying to run some stuff. Okay, it's saying host is likely vulnerable to MS010. Okay, Windows Server 2008 R2 standard, whatever service pack is going to go through and core raw buffer dumps it's just trying to send some stuff interesting i'm here and what do you have i have a meter meter screen available to me and this is this is like golden i know something crazy must have happened now this what really happened i'm actually inside the windows machine this command is really think about a cmd inside the windows server for example if i do pwd so print working directory <gasps> you see that i'm going to see windows system 32 okay i'm no longer in my kali machine so if i do a cd dot dot and then another cd dot dot and then again pwd so i'm in the at the root okay uh let's see who am i if i do who am i that command is not actually uh, available with this particular one. You can always do a help whenever you are in the meterpreter. And it is going to tell you what kind of stuff you can do. Okay, You can just write get system. Attempt to elevate your privilege to the local system. Play. You know, you can record the audio. You can webcam chat, webcam snap, all kinds of stuff in there get desktop get kind of meta, meta speed of desktop i'm just trying to see what kind of interesting stuff that you have that you can do here you can look at arp ip config uh you can do cd we have already done uh dir you can also do uh i'm just checking for uuid okay so that's what i need to get the current user so let's just go down to the bottom and do UUID, let's see who am I. So that's the UUID of the guy 
as I'm logged in with. So in here, let's see what can I do. So again, if I do PWD, I'm at C. So let's just go to CD users. Okay, and I know that I have a vagrant users in there. And yeah, let's just go to the desktop of that guy and do a DIR. Okay, so these it looks like there are two different files in that desktop. And just to prove you that I'm there, I'm just gonna go and show this Windows 2008. And if you look at it, these are the two files that I have. Okay, and I'm locked in as a background user right now. Box starter shell and start desktop central. So that that uh, desktop central and desktop the INI. Okay. Here, can I create a directory? MKDIR and let's say call it hacked. And it says it got created. So it says verify over here. So you can want to go here. <gasps> Look at that. So what you are seeing right now, I'm demonstrated. I have demonstrated a successful exploit with a remote code execution type exploit where I have exploited the eternal blue vulnerability or the SMB1 vulnerability that I have from the Kali machine I have exploited I have not provided any username password whatsoever I have a shell that is connected to the machine and I can do all kinds of stuff again if you do help here you can do all of this different type of stuff okay and I'll let you guys uh, play with this uh, some stuff and see what else you can do you can reboot looks like <laughs> you can you can do whatever you want so let's try and see if reboot really works from here uh, I'm gonna bring up the other one and We'll, we'll notice if it actually reboots the system so reboot and it says rebooting the system and let's see if it does or if it does not okay sometimes with windows uh, virtual box it may take a little bit of time for the reboot to occur but it has sent the power down and it said actually see the operation fails it may not be able to do that one uh, just yet but yeah, let's uh, maybe try IP config. Uh, see if that is successful or not. And looks like IP config is just fine. And uh, what I said, that the IP address of that box is 172.16.0.21. And if you look at it, I'm getting exactly that. So again, uh, let's do a DIR. And I see I have all of them available and everything is working properly. So that's about it. So you have a successful attack uh, that we have done in less than like 15 minutes with Kali Box and with a vulnerable machine in my network. Uh, so hopefully you have learned a little bit. So if you have this vulnerability, the easiest way to fix this one is just to patch the system. So please, if you find this vulnerability, fix it today. Fix it now. Thank you very much for watching.